Morning Colin, morning Jeff. Yeah, I've had a good safe week. At the moment, this morning, we're going to be flying solo because Joe has not got out of bed. But he may turn up. Uh, mic's on. Looks like we're all working. So, is me chat working? Morning Lee, morning Derek. Morning Paul. Let's move that monitor around a bit so I can see it while we're standing here. I've got a camera right in the way of it, so I'll stand over the side. Morning John, morning Fred. No Joe Fred, he's not up yet. I've given him a shout, but ooh, no. Morning Jay, morning Wavy, morning Stuart, hmm. morning Pete, morning Pat. Yeah, fingers crossed for the internet. I've been testing it for the last half hour and we were getting a good signal. Uh, it's all green on OBS at the moment, so who knows? Fingers crossed for the dreaded internet. Great news indeed, fingers crossed. The gremlins could net strike again. Hi Dave. He had to go in the, Derek, Joe had to go in school twice this week to teach. Two mornings, he found it very difficult. Hi Jacques. Morning BB, I've just been informed by Mrs. Oliver, Joe is up, he's in the bathroom, so he may join us. If he don't join us, it all starts going wrong, I'll be diving from left to right, I'll mute the, mute the mic, because I might be using bad language. Morning Fred. Yeah, real work. Two mornings. They had to have 16 kids in the class, but they didn't all turn up. He's been teaching all the way through this. He teaches remotely uh, using the platform the school's got. Uh, and he's only got a few days to go. Morning, Steve. Yes, I'm well. Refreshed. Let him have breakfast first. I haven't had breakfast. Why should he have breakfast? Morning, Trevor. Morning, Nick. Morning, Paul. How you doing, mate? You all right? I can hear a Pepsi can. Joe must be appearing. Well before the start. Look at this. Eh? He's come dying. Armed. With Diet Coke. Tissues. He suffers from acute hay fever. So we never know if it's a good day or a bad day. It's a bad day. It's a bad day. Hello Mrs Oliver. She's run off. She's checked I haven't got her hair dryer. 
makeup brushes or anything like that, and off she's gone. She may come back later. You never know. Morning, Gary. How you doing, mate? Morning, Derek. You realize I'm stood in front of the camera, right? Yeah, because I can't see the screen and stand in front of the camera. Probably if I did that. I've yeah. got a camera in the way of the screen. We've got cameras everywhere. Now Joe's not starting to cry. Morning, Brian. There's two Paul Smiths. That's going to get confusing. Paul Smith, Paul Smith. Morning, morning. Hello, hello. It's like a TV program, isn't it? Hello, hello. Name that program. It was called Hello, hello. Don't give away the answer. I thought you were going to confuse that and say, don't tell him, Pike. I said, no, that's Dad's army. Pete, yeah, live streaming is a bit of a challenge with broadband. Um, I've been talking to a few people about it, and it seems even with uh, dedicated fibre lines, it can still be an issue. Morning, Martin. I think it's something to do with OBS, uh, your computer, you yeah, know, we run, or I run, a real, it was a new computer, it's powerful, it's a, what they call an i7, it's got 32 gig of RAM in it, it's got a super uh, SDS drive, it's got a big backup hard drive, it's got whistles and bells and, yeah, hey ho. It is what it is. I will just cross my fingers. I've got them crossed in my pockets at the moment, just in case, you know. So far, so good. We've been up for about five minutes, no problems. <laughs> Famous last words. I would say touch wood, I haven't got any. Oh yeah, that'd do, look, touch wood. Well, a couple of minutes and we'll get started. I think everybody's sort of milling in so we'll get there Have I practiced the computer spill? I've got it up on the other screen. I've got the CPS uses, CPU usage, everything. Because I want to see what makes it fall over. Morning, Charlotte, from Australia. You're recording your TV program, are you? Oh, Mick Stratton, you've got out of bed. Oh, no, I know. You're watching it in bed with your cup of tea the maid bought you earlier. Mm. Well, Baz, well, it's nice to see so many of you come back to run the gauntlet with the internet. Thought I might put everybody else off for good last week. Put me off. Morning, Dunk. Do I know what it all means? Yeah, unfortunately, I do know a little bit of what it means. Disaster, Derek. Disaster, that's what it means. Put me near a computer, it's disaster. Many years ago, I had a lot of time for computers. I used to play with them all the time. Today, I turn them on if they don't want to work. They just have to make sure there's no hammer in sight. Oh, it's Mike Walt. Morning, Mike Walt. If anybody's not seen Mike Walt or on Facebook, ask him about the ball of wool. 
We were both crying with laughter yesterday. Morning, Henry. Morning, Adam. Morning, Helen Bailey. Oh, that's off an airbrush. Joe's picked up a piece of metal and looking around all over the place where it's come from. Right, you lucky people, it is 10 o'clock. It is Saturday morning and I'm back. So, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to try and recreate a piece I placed on Facebook. Replicate this on a smaller scale because it took a while. Crocodile. Um, now, this has been airbrushed using stencils. Uh, and the reason the piece, I believe, works so well is the shape. The curve flows all the way around. Uh, and from a distance, the colours sort of merge into each other. But if I bring it up to the camera, slowly, 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 you can see loads of little dots that make up that patination. Um, so it's got a lot going for it. Uh, People might not like the colour, colour schemes and other thing, but if you bling colours that go together, then it will work. Just do it in the colour that you like. Um, but I have that standing indoors, and as I look at it, the colours merge. Whoop, you can't see it, because I've gone over there, and it should be over here. The colours merge, so they blend. Um, but then as you get closer, you see the stipple dotty effect. So that's what we're going to try and recreate. Now, a field of rapeseed. for those that saw part of last week's demonstration, this is the finished piece. Um, you can see what I did is I blended the uh, same colours we're going to use today, blues and greens and yellows to give this sort of get it in the camera tinted effect the inside's just been polished with a bit of wax uh, and when you peel you peel the hot melt glue off to expose the wood so expose the wood cameras that way expose the wood so you can spend a lot of time and make up some really intricate patterns with your hot melt glue and then pull them off you know you can sort of draw a pattern on there glue over the pattern and so on and so forth so um, but that was last week's finished piece uh, there but we've moved on we're doing this week's piece so what we've got is we've got a block of sycamore that's sported um, I've sported it myself and I think it might add something to it we'll find out as we uh, go through the process so over to the overhead camera like so and i'll just bring that around so you can see it so what i'm going to do is just find the center quickly and i safely bought over a center finder earlier because it's clear plastic i can't see it so i move this in and get my center this is roughly six inches in diameter so i'm going to be going in about here I don't know if my punch will go through there, so let's just mark it with a pencil for a minute. Somewhere around there. Get my punch, put a little mark in there. That one. Flip it over. Try and do this to keep it on camera for you. It's a bit angled, so I might come off a of camera here a bit. Hopefully it'll be round in a minute. So we'll get that rough there roughly center and put a mark in there I think that moved as I did it but hey oh we're gonna turn it round so safely put me center finder down so I can't find it later um, looking at that that's the odd end the other end so I'm just gonna bring it up to the two punches marks lock me tail stop off wind her up Nice and slowly pick up the two indented marks, give her a twist by hand. Then you won't see this on the camera, but I've got my knockout bar through the headstock. Give that step a couple of taps to reset it, and we should be set. Just 
two rest up, two rest down, all that sort of stuff. Bring it up, make sure we're spinning free, turn the lay speed down, and now we're going to get out of the line of fire. Turn the lathe on, slowly turn the speed up. Look at that, almost round. So, safety glasses on. Uh, Joe's going to adjust the camera slightly. He's watching on a Got it. Right, Joe's messing with the camera. Ooh, look at that. Looky, looky. Banks all centered up and we're ready to rock and roll. Same as normal, long grind bowl gouge. Turn the speed on and now I'm just going to take a, a very light trimming cut. Real light, just following the tool along the tool rest. I'm just removing some of this outside rubbish. Now I'm going to stop that because I just want to check this blank. We've got a bit of a crack going on down here. We should get rid of that. That's all I think we've got to contend with. One there. Yeah, that's the only crack. All right. So, now what I'm doing is I've got the tool in my right hip. I'm rubbing the back of the bevel, leaning towards the lathe. And as I lean towards the lathe, away from the lathe rather, I don't know me tools and froms. I'm just raising the handle up a little bit. Just to put in the top curve. And this is only rough at the moment because we're going to be mounting in a, a chuck. So I just want to see, again, a rough outline shape. And one more there. It's going to be fine. So now I want to square the bottom off. And we get a bit more speed into the lathe as it's balanced. So I've moved my tool rest round at a right angle to the end uh, there. Let's whip over to this other angle there. I've whipped my tool rest round. And now I'm just rotating the blank to make sure she's not going to catch anywhere. Make sure she's all locked down. Turn this lathe back on. And now we're just going to turn the ghost. So I've got the tool in my side again. I'm gauging my bevel to my ghost. And just coming through. And it will just knock down that high point. As I go into the centre, I just raise my handle. There. And I'll just bring my tool rest up. There, I am going to drop it just a little bit. or just a tad eye. It didn't much matter there, but it will matter now. And our crack here goes in a bit deeper than I thought, but we're going to make the base quite narrow, so we'll persist. I have got a backup piece of wood if needed. So as I come in now... Just raise the handle as I go, and I want to bring that up close to the live centre, like so. Yeah, right. So our crack comes into about there. 
about halfway down the blank, but most of that's going to be turned away. So that should be fine. So now we want to mark a spigot and a, a little bit high in the middle. So let me just... That's better. Right. So now we want to mark our spigot size. We'll do that first. And the old vernier comes out. I've even got glasses today. I don't know where I put them though. I can't see them. There we go. About 46 mil. That'll do. We'll turn this on. I'll try and... You can't see that from there. I've got the left hand point scribing. Right hand point lining up. I'm about there. I give the left hand point a bit more of a shove and now you should be able to see the circle there. That's the distance for our jaws. And now we can take a bit of wood off into there. Picked up the wrong gouge. I've got backup gouges and turn the speed up a bit. So we're now spinning around about 1300. Uh, I'm going to take some of this waste down. Just near this, what will be the spigot in a minute. I've got to pack this wool turning up. It doesn't have to make a mess. Shavings all over the place. Now I want me spigot around about 10 mil deep, and there's one more there. Somewhere there, and we want to create a little shoulder for parting off and waste wood and all that sort of stuff. So I've just adjusted the tool rest around so I've got more support and I'm just gonna bring in half as much again to about there. That's gonna be our waste wood. That'll do us. So there's a bit of waste wood and we're ready to put a spigot in there. So, tool rest around of it. Tool rest a little bit higher. You know the drill. If you've seen this before, I use my skew as a scraper. I look on the opposite side. reduce the wood to the line and that chatter there is because I got the tool a little bit lower it should be up a little bit like a peeling cut slowly raising the handle in now I'll tidy this up by moving the handle around. Let's come back over the head. Moving the handle around. Just to flatten that off a little bit. I want a slight taper into there. But I want this to be nice and even. Let's get rid of that. And get rid of any high points now to that nodule on the end. Now we've got to make sure that this shoulder is nice and flat. So I'm just coming in parallel, raising my handle, lift and twist, and that should have cleaned it up. Now I've got a straight edge here, and that is just a fraction of 
minute little bit just in there there cutting this spit and getting this shoulder square is the most important thing you shouldn't be able to get a five pound note in between the jaws and this face the face of the jaws and this face here so that's got that roughly where we want it and now while we're between centers we'll just we could put it in chuck and do this but i'm just going to start putting the shape into what will be the base so i want to bring this around so i've got to take some wood out here And I'm just stepping back. And to get my curve, as I lift, come along the tall rest, I'm twisting my right hip into the lathe and lifting my handle as I go. It's all about the timing. Lose a bit of that. One more. Somewhere there. Okay, so we've got a nice sort of flowing curve down there. Uh, a little bump in there, but we're going to bring that around. So that's going to be a uh, sort of bottom shape-ish. Okay, so we're with that at the moment. So, now, we take it out between centres. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of the elbow stabber. I shouldn't be anywhere near it, but somehow it always gets you, no matter where you are. Knockout bar to get rid of our stab. It's not a woolly stab, Mike. It's a normal stab. Before I get that in quick. Uh, and get the chuck on the lathe. There. Chuck keys over here. Whoop! Of course, it's alive. It's still alive. That's how smooth a finish I've got off the gouge. It's slippery. So I pinch down. Now, because we're dealing with engrain, I can really tighten down on this chuck. There, yeah, and then I'll just visually check this to make sure I've got no gaps between my for your faces it looks good because I've remounted I turn the lathe speed down turn it on I'm standing out the way just in case I've got anything wrong and there we go it's running really true just there not there we've not finished that bit but we can see that's gone into the chuck well so now, I'll bring up my tool rest again, and we'll finish this shape. Now, I've got everything here about a little trick I was going to show you. Hold on just a second. Now, this is a just a diamond sharpening card, but what you can do is you roll it around the form. You can do it with any straight edge, but I find these just the right length for this. And when you've got a flat spot, so that it's moving really smoothly, so the curve's good. When I get to there, the bit I haven't finished, it rocks. And I can feel it rock, so that shows me I've got a flat spot. Just a little tip. So, I can see I've got a flat spot, but just a way to help you. So, back with the gouge. Turn the speed on. 
and now we're just going to, we're spinning again around about 1300 I'm just going to create a curve round at the top I just laid off that cut a little bit. I could just hear a little vibration through the tool. So I was just pushing a bit much. There. Now I just want to just balance this curve up. Just raise my handles a go, slight <coughs> twisting towards the lathe, somewhere there. Now just coming back, right what I'm going to do, want the curve to be in the right sort of place, around about a third where it seems to be the break, but it's a little bit out here, but I've got to face this top off. So let's face the top off and get the piece to where we want it to be. So just make sure my tool's going to come through on centre. Lock my tool rest down. Make sure she's locked. Don't want it moving around. And now I'm just going to pick up a couple of light cuts along the front to flatten this off. To the middle there, another one there, somewhere there, let's have a look, I've still got a bit too much on the top, so we're good there. Just got a bit of rough grain on the rim. I'm not worried about the centre, so I'm going to tidy that up first. Paul said thanks for that tip. No problem. We're all here to learn. These are very fine cuts. You can see the shaving just flicking up. Oh, the only thing coming off. Let's put that onto the end camera. Is that the end camera? There's the end camera. So you should see that now. Real fine. Real fine. I'm watching the camera screen and see this as I do it so you can see it. Right. So you get this real fine sort of shaving. All I was interested in is tidying this edge up a bit. I might have to do a bit more with it later, but... Because what we're going to do is we're going to colour first. And then holler second. So, and let's just bring our shape round a bit. And I want to knock this height of this curve down a bit here. Somewhere there. Oh, 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 oh. There. So Mike. now I'm going to come back the other way. What was that? Mike Stratton's doing fighting talk. We're all talking about the spit fires because we can all hear it at various points. Yeah. And uh, Mike said, Ed, they're talking about the spit fires. You used to watch them fly over London in the back of the Britain, didn't you? <laughs> During the Battle of Britain, Mike. I wasn't even thought about, mate. I'm still only a boy. Right, I've just brought that curve down and I'm looking at that and I think 
that's okay. But I will use the card trick to double check it. Let's make sure. And yeah, she rolls. Lovely. So I'm just going to tidy this top in now to blend the curve. So I'm now going to just pick it up the other way, back of the bevel, handle towards the lathe. And just a slow cut. Very light. I want this curve to finish all the way into the top. Raise my handle. There. Now I've got a high point just in the middle there, so I've got to tidy that out. Yeah, it's real light shaving now. Yeah, let's raise my handle as I go. Still a bit of a bump there that I don't like. Let's come back over it for you. And now, see how good I am? I'm pushing buttons here, changing cameras. I think I'm going to get Joe to do the wood turning next week. And I'm going to be the camera operator. What do you reckon? If you want to see that on a postcard, vote away. Right, so... We're just going to bring this. We've got a little bump here that I don't like. I'm just picking up the finest of cuts here. That bump was nothing, but it was there. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Right, so. Mike says that the surface is a tad woolly. The t <laughs> Mark has replied with that you're knitting it together well. <laughs> well done, Mark. Keep them going. Very Mike wool at any given opportunity, everybody. Yeah, lovely present yesterday. Nice ball of wool. What he doesn't know, I've also joined him up to a knitting circle. Uh, whack the extractor on, please, Joe. I've got all the blast gates open, just exactly. Um, we're just going to give this a sand now, and then we'll just check it. So, let's bring the extractor in right into play here. And then we just whip round here quickly. I'm going to why check that now. Why is someone turning into knitting needles? Oh, now Mike, there's a challenge for you. Make yourself some wooden knitting needles tomorrow night. Mike's on again tomorrow night, 7.30, and his live demo is going to be making knitting needles. Right, so I'm just coming round here. Quickly through the grits now, the first grit just removed any little mark this grit was the 180 240 320 <laughs> 400 Mike said I make them all the time with my goblins <laughs> well done Mike and then lastly 600 now I haven't put on a dust mask but any time you're sanding do put on a dust mask I just find it awkward to talk get the mic going and I wasn't doing a lot of sanding so we're about there sandpaper out the way put that down somewhere safe for me to knock over in a minute so there's our shape there's our outside shape so now we're going to start applying some colour you can hit that extractor now Joe thank you now, if I've got no Joe, I'm going to have to get a remote control for my extractor. Yeah, I'm going to lock it in 
don't stick. So, tack cloth, remove the dust. Now you're going to ask the question, I'm sure, well, why aren't you going to oil it before you paint it? That would be an obvious question, wouldn't it? All right. Well, the reason we are going to paint it first is when you're spraying, you could mask up the inside, but you can easily get paint on the inside of your hollow form. So, I'm quite comfortable. I'm not going to come through the side. So, I'm going to do this now. Now, what I've got to think about is this bottom. I'm looking at this bottom and I'm thinking it's going to be a bit wide there for parting off. So, I want to lose some of this foot piece now. I've got about a quarter of an inch to go for it, the jaws. So, I'm just going to line my tool rest up so I can get in there. Get my gouge. I'm just going to pick up and knock this down a bit. And I just want to go under a bit. There. I'm just pushing in. I'm going to re-sand the bottom in a minute. I've still got a little way to go. So I'm going to just push that under. something there that's it and then when I part off it will just flow down to the table top now turn the lathe off I'm not even going to turn the extractor on for this I just want to get in there just for well it depends what you're doing the question was what speed is best for sanding if you're going to hang sand, rule of thumb is turn the lathe speed down because you're going to generate more heat. So something there, sort of five, six hundred-ish, and keep the paper moving. But if you're going to use one of these inertia reel sanders, then speed is your friend. So you can stand, sand around about... 12 to 1500 I'm just about 12 there so I'm just getting in there blending that in now I'm just doing if you want to blend something king I'm just doing where I wanted to sand but as I rock round I'm just coming up slightly to blend the sanding line in so we shouldn't see any transition now I'm on 320, I'm just going to come up a tad further. Four hundred, tad further again. And then six hundred, we just give it one wipe. There. That was a bit dusty, wasn't it? <laughs> right. So that will do me, I think. That will do where I want it to be. So, back to the paint. We'll just give that another wipe off with the tack cloth to make sure we got rid of our dust. Now, one of the problems is if you're going to do this sort of work, Ideally, what you'll do is uh, get the uh, dust out of the way first. Now, I'll show you something. I just remembered something, Derek. Um, yep. Peter Lake's put in a request before you do. He said, uh, can you please tell the couriers not to deliver, uh, deliver goods during your live demos? He said, but thank you for the quick delivery. <laughs> right. I'll put a note on them, not Saturday, between 10 and 12-ish. 12-ish. <laughs> right. Now, I'll make this down here. I think it was... Uh, we 
my old mate Derek from the club and we was talking about vacuum cleaners so let me just come over to here excuse this self-indulgence for a moment if I can tilt this camera down there Derek that's a vacuum cleaner it's an industrial dust sucker so the best idea if you're doing this sort of work uh, we'll do this just real quick and you haven't got a second location to take your paint into little painting studio would be a good idea just get rid of the dust come back over it If I turn on both motors, it sounds like this. There, are Helen Bailey, that's how you clean a workshop. That's it done for the next year. It's sported sycamore, right? Yeah, it's a bit of sycamore that's sported. Uh, I've sported it myself. Uh, and the reason we're using sported sycamore is because that was the piece I found. No other reason than that. I don't know what it's going to do for the effect on this, but we're going to find out in just a minute. So, now we come round to a bit of air brushing. And what we're going to do to get the effect is we're going to use a stencil. Now, stencils come in different shapes and sizes. Let me get a board up here. Slide that on there. Bit of board. This is just a house things. It's almost professional, this demo, isn't it? Almost professional. And trouble is, I'm doing it, so it ain't going to happen like that. Um, so here I've got a... Come back over here. Oh, wrong one. Because we're down. Let's bring that up. Back up. Back up. Move that round a little bit. I'm just in cameras on my own and everything. So here I've got a book of... Stencils. I've got various stencils throughout the book that I use for different bits and pieces. You probably won't see them too well on the camera, but there's, I'm picking them up all the time. The two stencils we're going to use today are these. One's an ultra fine sort of meshy dotty thing, and the other one is a little bit bigger meshy dotty thing. So they're the stencils we're going to use. Come back over to here. So we're going to stick the compressor on. And while we're sticking the compressor on, we'll bring some paints in. Got a little air leak on me compressor. It's um, going to... Change the camera angle. Sorry? We'll change the camera angle while you have it. We have. Oh, I'm on it. I'm right on it. I can have a lay on something. Right. Bit of reducer. So... Like last week, this might be the dreaded bit. I think the old uh, video doesn't like intrinsic colours. We still ain't cut out, there's a result. Right, so I've got yellow and green and a couple of shades of blue here. Actually, and a turquoise. We might use that, we might not. So I'm going to start with the green. So I'll give that a shake up. Grab the airbrush, bring that over here. Now, what does sporting mean? Sporting means when the wood is starting to rot, fungus attack. So it puts a different colour into the wood, but it is fungus. And sporting, if you get really sported wood at times, 
can be stunning just to turn on its own. A lot of people like turning sported beef. But if you're going to turn heavily sported wood, make sure you're wearing a mask because there's more pores of this fungus floating in the air. A bit like the dreaded virus. So make sure you've got a mask on if you're seriously going to turn sported wood. So the greens all shook up. Uh -huh. And we're going to add a bit of this to the airbrush. Like so. It's about, I don't know, third of a cup. A bit of reducer. Not a lot. Not a lot. Just a little bit. A few drips like that. Now I'm just going to give this a stir up with a stick and I think this just might be a tad thick, oh no that's better, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up and the thing that I've forgotten is most importantly and that's why I've got the ball here is some uh, kitchen roll. Move the stencils out away for a minute. So you should be able to see the kitchen roll. Let's move that stick. If I get that over there, that might work. So, whoop, nearly the ball's not fixed to lay. Push down on it, nearly will come towards me. Um, I've got some kitchen roll that I'm laying down and another bit to dab with. So what I'm going to do is spray and keep the stencil clear. So I want to get the stencil down onto the work and I'm just pinching it down. If you don't like paint on your hands, wear gloves. I've got gloves and I've forgot all about them. And now I'm yeah, going like to get a bit of colour into there and lift it off. And then I'm going to go again about there. And now we're going to have to build this up. There, we just keep working round, building this up. Come back a bit. Now, if you haven't got airbrush, you haven't got to worry with these. You could use a bit of foam or a brush and dip it on, paint it on. Let me, uh, well, let's use the paint in the brush. I'll show you on the next thing. Whoop, that was the uh, screen that got that bit. Take your finger off the trigger, you plum. I'd be finger on the trigger. It hits the trigger when you don't want it to. No, right. Uh, a little trade secret coming up. So what I've done now is because I'm getting excess paint on the stencil, I've now laid it on the tissue and I'm dabbing it off with the other bit of tissue so we don't get blotches. Right, to make your wood sported, what you can do is if you've got a wet log, 
if you left it on its own, it would sport in time, but it might rot out. So one of the ways you can do it is to get uh, some pallet wrap, cling film, and wrap your log. And that will speed up the sporting process. Sport, sporting? Sporty. Sporty friend. Sporting process, not sporting as in football. Sporting. So you can sport wood if it's wet by wrapping it in cling film. Uh, then put it in a bit of heat. That really accelerates it. So if it's a nice sunny day, put it outside. The moisture sweats inside the uh, cling film pallet wrap. And with a bit of luck, it won't crack too badly. Try and do it with a piece of wood that hasn't got a bit of piff running down the middle of it. That's uh, another way. So, But that's the way you do it. Or can do it. There's probably other ways, but that's the way I do it. Like everything, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Now, you see, we got a bit blotchy there because I was talking, not paying attention. So, I'll dap that off there. It's not the end of the world with this base coat, to be fair. And I am using the smaller stencil because this is our first phase. Yeah, and then you just keep building this up. You just use like a natural wet log or do you submerge it first? Uh, just, I use a natural wet log, so fresh cut. If you're using iridescent paint, is it not better to have a black base? Um, no, not necessarily. It depends the effect you want to get. See, with this, we actually see a bit of wood at the top of the piece bleeding through in places. So, um, the black, putting a black base on, oh, putting a black base on, uh, I've just managed to tip the paint all out of the cup of the spray, I've got a gun holder here and I didn't use it. Um, typical Oliver painting this is paint everywhere apart from where you want it. Um, what was we talking about? I've forgotten. Black base. Oh, black base. Black base just can make the colours look a different shade brighter, all this sort of stuff. But you don't need to use a black base with iridescent paints. No, this is going on. You can see that it's going on. We can see the wood showing through. And this is one of them projects where less can be more. Now, I don't want a nice even line down here, so I'm just going to start bringing this paint up a little bit in areas because we're going to blend them and I can put it on thicker in other areas and lighter in other areas you just mess around now I'm doing this to a time scale uh, when I did the piece that I showed you earlier the airbrushing took about two and a half hours because I was messing around with it and walking away from it and all the rest of it but this is the technique uh, and you just play with it as you will so there's some green in there when I change colors in a minute I'm going to show you a way to do it that see yeah it's got to keep dabbing these stencils down to get rid of this excess paint otherwise you get these dark blodges that I've just managed to get just there as i say this is the base so this really doesn't matter if we get a couple of dark blodges in it but understand why you're getting the dark blodges so you're in control now that bit of tissue is full of paint so that's not cleaning anything off so let me come over bring a bit more tissue into play here Let's 
to clean it up a bit. So, I'll show you another way that you can apply paint through the stencils. I've got a box here. This is just a little foam dabber. So we'll have a go with the foam dabber. We're going to apply a bit of yellow. I've got a makeshift pot, an old lid. I did forget something this morning. Forgot to get out my uh, paint tray. Hey, I'm just going to just put a little couple of dabs of yellow in there. Because I'll airbrush with the yellow in a minute. And I'm just going to put one splodge of reducer on it. There. Stir that together. And just thin it down a little bit. There. Now if I get me foam, get the paint on the tip of my foam, hold my stencil on and dab onto the stencil, you can get the same sort of effect, too much paint on the end of the blodger there, there, it's sunk underneath so just dab a paint, little tap. And you can just slightly see it coming through. Where does the sporting tank will come from? Not long at all. So this piece was wrapped in paper uh, two, three weeks ago. And it's already started to discolour and fungus up. And I took it out of the paper because this was going to be a backup piece if we needed it. I can re-wrap it. Um, the longer it's left, it will go in a bit deeper, the sporting. This piece was wrapped in paper a year ago. So you can do it with the dibber, but airbrush works better. So let's go back to the airbrush. Now... I've still got green in here, but I'm going on to yellow, so I'm not worrying about cleaning the brush out because we're blending the colours anyway. So I'm going to put in about as much yellow as I did green to start with. A few drops of thinner or airbrush reducer as Terry calls it and we'll give this a stir in it's made it just a different tone of green at the moment far more yellowy but that's fine now we hold this up and we can start overlapping a little bit Said there's nothing better than spending a Saturday morning watching paint dry. <laughs> I've told him you can always take up knitting. Yeah, join the knitting circle, Mike. That's going to be next week's demo. Pearl one, whatever it's called. I know Pearl one's one of it. No, Pearl one, knit one, sew one, something like that. And no, we sewing's a different thing. Sewing's a different thing, right? Uh, it's all needle and thread, isn't it, or something? All needles. A bit like going to the doctors. That's all needles. You get it wrong. Uh, we're just getting the yellow now coming through. Is that another dab off? And as it becomes more yellow, I start coming further up the form. I'm 
dabbing this off because the yellow is a bit thinner. So. Okay, let's keep working it and dabbing it and working it and dabbing it and spraying my hands. Brush that off. I'm going to bring the yellow down into the green a little bit. There. Oop, that went a bit wrong. So I'm just going to dab that in with the tissue. It really doesn't matter too much. We want the stipply effect. I think the uh, piece of paper underneath is soaked in paint. Let's clean that off a bit better. There we go, that's better. And now we come back and we get one in there. I'm holding it down quite tight onto the uh, wood. Trouble with round objects and uh, stencils like this, they take a lot of forming to get round the other form. You can do it, but you need to start cutting the stencil realistically. There we go. That. Now, this really is the base of this because we're going to go to the other stencil in a minute which has got much bigger well I say much bigger not giant got bigger uh, gaps in it as we come up so we've got our yellow coming in we'll get yellow up a little bit higher Yeah, I might just clean this airbrush through in a minute so the yellow's more prominent. Oh, it's coming nice and yellow now. I'll do anything left in the brush, so we'll just use this bit up. Something in there. Near the brush running out now. Now I could just do. We're just putting a couple of dabs of this remaining paint at the bottom here. If I can get it in there just a little bit. Not very much at all. So we can still see the wood through the airbrush. Airbrushing the paint. What we got there? Somewhere there. There. Right, so... We've got through there. Now we're going to go with our green, our blue. I'm just going to flush my airbrush out. I've got this, uh, another chestnut product idea, airbrush cleaner. I just mix that in there, spray that out. Just using the old bit of towel. to spray it on you can get little pots you spray into and empty but if you're in a workshop like mine you spray it anywhere on the floor on yourself anywhere as you can see i've colored my hands better than i've colored the work at the moment so now i'm going to come in with a blue uh, and i'm probably going to go in with a this azure give that a shake up might need a bit more yellow in there actually doesn't matter we'll, we'll go with the blue so let's put a dollop of blue in there we can always come back over it you see bit of reducer now there will be a slight bit of residue left in the 
nozzle so we'll overlap with that stir up in there everybody still awake um, someone just said they just realised you didn't use sand in the tiller should you be using it or? no I'm going straight onto the wood I'll look at doing me uh finishing at the end I want the paint to go into the wood so sanding cedar if you use sanding cedar whatever you put on is not sitting in the wood it's sitting on the surface of the sanding cedar so this is a paint effect and then I would finish it and I'd let the paint dry properly And then start using my sanding cedars and whatever's afterwards. But I'd do the painting first. Yeah, you can start seeing a little bit of blue coming through here, this lighter blue. And we're just sort of overlapping the yellows and the greens a little bit. And I'm just going to whip round quickly with this smaller stencil for this transition line. So it doesn't look like it is a transition line. The idea is to blend it into the other all the time. Now, you might not see the blue so much on here at the moment because it's a lighter blue. But we will use a darker blue in a minute. But I just want to make this transition line fairly invisible. So it all blends. And I'll keep dabbing this off now. As I go, I'm going to get a bit in there. I went in close there, um, and it gives it a more, because this is quite watered down, a more denser colour, because I don't, I'm trying not to make it even, and now my tissue has completely got coked in paint so clean tissue no expense spared here for you guys okay. I'll use several sheets of kitchen roll for you let's get that one there I'm being a bit cautious because I haven't fixed the board down to the lathe Normally I'd clamp the board. Or do it in a separate location. I.e. the bench I've got on the other side of the workshop or behind me down the other. Over there. Sort of over there where you can't see it. Uh, when that's cleaned off and I'll sit and spray and do that sort of stuff there. Now you can slowly see the blue starting to appear. And as I get this gas to appear through the greens and yellows, I want to come down a little bit here. Let's get just a little bit in there. And then we'll start building up a bit of blue over there. There. So now what I'm going to do is move over to the next stencil, which has got a slightly larger mesh on it. And you can see the dots. Well, you will see the dots in a moment. Just getting a bit bigger. But because the holes are bigger, then I've got to dab it off just a tad more frequently.
blue's just run out, so let's add some more in there. <coughs> Little bit of thinners, reducer there. Little stir up, stir it up, stir it up, a bit. You can see why I wasn't a pop star. There. And now I'm just coming in here. And you can start seeing this speckled pattern. Slowly over, I've just caught the other stencil, let's get rid of that. I might want that back in a minute. Hours of fun, airbrushing fun. Should have named this the airbrush demo rather than the wood turning demo, I know. There we go. In a minute, we can come back with the yellows and greens if we need to. And I'm sort of dabbing this off just quickly in between each coat. Come further up the stencil now. As we blend this in. If I'm really quick, we'll get a bit of hollering in. Can you see the blue coming through on the camera? <laughs> Bill Farini said, uh, who's going to make Ed some knitted stencils? <laughs> that could be a thing, Stuart, yeah. Knitted stencils, Mike Walt's speciality. Go, Mike. And then we just keep building this. I want to overlap the last colour a little bit. Just in a little area. Just so it blends in. You could just spray the thing with a base colour and then stencil over the top of that. Mike's asked if you're going to hollow using it in the Next week demo, I'm going to make Mike Wall a pair of knitting needles, number sixes. Oop, wrong way up. Yeah, my compressor's leaking. I had a quick dabble with it this morning. I don't know where it's coming from. It's just bubbling a bit of air on one of the joints. So that's a little project for in the week. Take it apart, put it back together again, find out where it's leaking from. You're not so silent, compressor. Yeah, not so silent. come back a little way just a light blue in there a little 
big void there. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Oh, there's too many jokes there, Mike. <coughs> huh? Mike's just said, I harvest my own war in case anyone's interested. <laughs> I feel there's way too many jokes there. Right. So, now we've got a lighter blue coming into that. Uh, and then we can play around with the yellows. But what I'm going to do <laughs> is come in with a darker blue now. <laughs> if it could be ready for the winter that would be great a nice knitted wig for the winter a little bit of reduce and now I'm going in with the final colour a real deep blue now I don't know if you know oh you did see that on camera that's what I'm quite good at is knocking paint over and there I knocked, but I had put the top on, so you didn't have to panic. So now we're going to come in with a dark blue up to the top. You're going to share that trip about how not to knock it over. Oh, I well, can do, yeah. I had a guy, I was doing a demo uh, somewhere, I forget where, a while ago. And I was using spirit stains and demoing with spirit stains. And I knocked this pot, but fortunately I had the top on, and I just happened to say I lose 50% of my spirit stains on the floor because I put them on the lathe bed, pick them up as I need them, and knock them over. And a guy said to me, I used to do that. He said, but I, why did I do that? I had an idea. So what he does is puts an earth magnet in the bottom of all pots, and then when he stands them on his lathe bed, the earth magnet secures the pot to the bed. I thought, clever idea. Never done it, never tried it, but it sounded good. So if someone wants to try it and let me know if it works, that'd be great. Let's put earth maggot, magnet in your newly bought pot of spirit stands and see if you can knock it off your lathe. And if you do, You'll be alright because I sell replacements. There we go. Actually, I will sell earth magnets that don't work. That'll do it, wouldn't it? Right, so. We're now going in with this final deep coat of blue to bring it together. Isn't an earth magnet that doesn't work just a piece of metal or a rock? Yes. Joe just <laughs> said, is an earth magnet that doesn't work just a piece of metal? And I said yes. Ideal. So I can bring the paint right up to the edge now. Because I've got no fear of spraying inside. Now, spot the deliberate mistake. See that big blodge of blue there? What happened... <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. As I was picking up the stencil, I caught the tip of the airbrush on the back of the stencil like so laid it over to spray it and the paint that had come off on the underside of the stencil went on there. So if this was going to be a perfectionist piece and not a demo piece, what I'd land up doing now is removing all my paint stuff, getting my lathe back on and I'd turn that away and start again. So, But I don't want to put you through another half hour demo of using an airbrush. So... We'll live with the blodge. Mike asked, will a magnet work on flying goblets too? Yeah, you could do that, Mike. Two magnets. Put one in either half of your goblet. Cracked it. So now I start overlapping with the deeper blue. And I want to fill in the areas where I can see too much wood. And I want to get up to the top there. Now there's nothing to stop you using different uh, styles of stencils. These are just sort of random dotty 
things. Fine, one's fine, set's finer than the other, but you could easily incorporate different stencils to get different effects. You could do this and then get a stencil of a butterfly or something and put a couple of butterflies on it. It's, choice is yours. Shay's wife wants to know if you do her nails. Yeah, I'm not allowed to open me now beauty salon, but as you can see, I'm quite good. Yeah, uh, you can have multicolored fingernails, lovely. Uh, I think <laughs> your fingernails are the only thing you've not got. <laughs> when, when, when we're allowed to reopen, I'll give you a shout and you can come along. So now I'm just coming down over the yellows and greens with the blue a little bit this deeper blue and i've got a bit there i want to make quite dark so i'll get right in there and now it's just a matter of not leave it you want the wood to i want the wood to show through you might not if you're doing it but i want the wood to show through but i don't want it to have one big bald area like my head so I'm just overlapping and come back there on that bit of green with a bit of blue there and I've got a bald area there so I can go in with this And this is where I get overexcited. I try and put wet stencils straight onto the work. So you don't do that. Dry it off. There, in there. Cut the areas there. I want to get that spot just there. Now the messing around comes now, which I'm not going to do because you've got the idea of it. But what you do now is you stand back and have a look and think, well, I need a bit more green in there or a bit more yellow. Uh, clean your airbrush out and then go back with greens and yellows. I've got that big heavy blodge of green there, so let's disguise that a little bit. there so you can get away with a few splodges because you can spray over with the stencil uh, and disguise them somewhere there and i'm going to bring a bit of blue oh, down now there's an idea malcolm so if you get customers to hold your stencils you kill two birds with one stone <laughs> so I'm just blending this deeper blue down the piece a bit I wonder if I can disguise that blodge let's have a look in there yeah that's not too bad I went in tight with the airbrush and give it a welly with some paint and you can hide it up Blue down there. I want a bit of blue on that yellow, and I think that will do us before you all fall asleep. Just there. That's it. Oh, and a little bit there. Oh, and there. Oh, and oh. No, last one, last one, promise. Last one, last one. That'll do me. Right, so. There's our piece coloured up. I would mess around with that some more. What I'd do now is probably put some more yellow just through here uh, and intensify it a little bit. But that's how we get the effect or how I got the effect on the other pot. But as I said, that was two and a half hours of airbrushing. So we've all got better things for two and a half hours to do. The only trouble is now I've got an airbrush full of paint um, which I will remember to tidy up. Where can I balance that, let's say? 
I'll balance it there. Um, Give it a bit of a spin, I've just zoomed in. Eh? Give it a bit of a spin, I've just zoomed in. Right, Joe zoomed in for you so you can see the effect building up. Uh, and you would just come back in, touching a bit of yellow, a bit more blue, a bit more green, and you just keep building and building and building until you're happy. So if you've got that there, you can see from this one, zoom back out a bit, Joe. Right, you can see from this one where... I've come back in with the yellow here and brought the yellow up into the blue a bit. You know, so you just keep playing and adding colour and messing around and that's how you'll get the effect. So, what we'll do now is clear the paintbrush away and a little bit more wood turning for 10 minutes. Look at that. Uh, Probably get it down to finish. I'll try and finish around about. Well, we've got. I'll try and finish about up past 11. But we might overrun by five minutes, but I just get a bit of, bit of it hollowed out so you can see how it should look. I'm just slowly as I'm waffling on, clearing the debris off the lathe, tissues, and boards and spray things and everything else so they're all off we turn me super noisy compressor off so we're about here so here i've got a false and a bit set up i just want to see my depth i've got a line ah oh, that's a better line that line there remember it's this line where my thumb is uh, let's come back right that line don't start telling me any other lines. Mike Walt, Mick Stratton. They're the culprits. They were the naughty kids in school, you know. Those two. Mike Walt and Mick Stratton together in a classroom. Could you imagine that? So, we're just going to drill through. Joe's whipping a camera angle. I'll turn the speed down a bit. I was still at 1200. 700 should do us. I'll just pick this up. Don't forget, as you do this, don't go too deep with the bit and not wind it back out. Otherwise, the shavings all build up behind the cutter and you won't get it out. Just back in the uh, tail stock back down, so the quill's back inside the tail stock, rather than all hanging out. Last little bit. Remember where your depth line is. Now I'll come round and just tie it up. Somewhere around there, do us. Turn lathe off for it. <laughs> Bring this up. So, because I'm going to hold this now, we'll just pop this around. 
just about there. I think you can still pick that up on the camera. There was a bit of laughing going on. What was that? It's on to go another six inches. Another six inches. Just one more drill. Right. So, my little Simon Oak six mil carbide cutter will rip the wood away. Joe's messing around with the shoulder camera. I'm not sure how that's going to work because I want my shoulder. Tall rest is too high. I want a hollow here at about 7 o'clock-ish. Between 7 and 8 o'clock-ish if, if that's our clock. And I'm going to roll my cutter in this position where it's dead flat. I call that 9 o'clock. I'm going to roll it over to about 7 o'clock. So if we're head on, that's flat. Roll it over to about there. 7 o'clock to 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And I'm just going to feel my way around here. I'm rocking my body in towards the camera. The lathe, everything. The uh, problem with these live demos, you're trying to rotate yourself the way you would normally and not hit the camera or get in the way of the camera. I'm just rocking myself into the lathe. We right it twist into the lathe. And now I take a bit more out of here. It went crack there. Well, yeah, you cable tied. When we're turning, we listen as well. So just then, I was turning away. You might have heard me say I thought something went crack there. And just as I was moving my body around, it sounded like a crack right by my ear. And I thought, what's that? And Joe was moving one of the cameras out of the way to give me shoulder room so you're on another camera. And it was cable tied, so he broke the cable tie. All be quiet, Mrs. Oliver's turned up. Stop talking about her, like you were earlier, now all be polite. So now... We're just rocking in. I'm taking out the bulk of the wood first and then I'll just come down and get us somewhere to uh, a wall fitness. I think that's about 10 mil or something that'll do. So I'm just now... picking up the other side. And what I can do, because this is more vase light, I've got a big opening, I can look on this face and see where my cut line is. So, although I'm moving my body, I can see roughly where my cut line is to get a guide that I'm meeting up with the last bit and then I'll go again, rip a bit more of this out. That's 
quite a good camera angle, isn't it? I can see it on the telly. You can see the way I'm feeding the gouge round on the inside there with that camera there, so that's quite cool. Even I can watch it. So that's, yeah, pretty smart. Rip that out of the way. Let's get rid of some of them shavings. And we've just about not quite halfway down. getting into the boring bit where you can't see. I won't get that angle on the camera, but well, I could if I move that. Over that's all right. No. Well, I'm just got to move this round. I'm just going to get down to the bottom hole. Um, I'll move that around a bit. With shoulder to shoulder now, as I bring my shoulder right down, the camera will bounce. Oh, I'm just in front of it. How much more have you got? Ah, uh, no, we're nearly there. I've just gotten down to the bottom now, so won't be a second. Joe's asking how much more we got. Rip that way a bit. Just want to get down to our bottom mark, really. Just back there. I can just film my way in there now. There's the bottom. One more cut, as they say. Right, I led right over the lathe there, so there we go. So that's rough hollow there on the inside. Let me just uh, get rid of the shavings. A lot of people might say my turning's all rough, but I think that's a bit unfair, really. Um, so there's a rough. Now, you can see we've just got a bit of paint around the rim. And if we wanted pure wood, and that's why I was getting that away, really. If we turn the lathe up, 
and then just take the finest of cuts along the face There, still can't make out if that's paint or sporting, so let's just last cut. Now I've got the edge just torn out there, I've got a bit of sandpaper here, so let's just. So that's just sporting there now. I've got rid of the paint. So I would just carry in hollowing it down until we got to finish. But if I come back, take that off of there. And there we have a decorated, similar to the piece I posted on Facebook pot. Uh, and the sporting you won't pick this up too much but it actually changed the tone colours of the paint so it adds another dimension to it but as I said I would mess around bringing in some more colour you know probably an hour's messing around to get the colours how you want them but that's how it's done and you've got a similar sort of effect that's our little demo for this morning over no broadband issues. Mike's Clean feed. Mike Walt was here. Ellen Bailey was here. And lastly, Mick Stratton was here, unfortunately. <laughs> Mick Stratton told you that your hairdryer is safe. Uh, 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 Shay told Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed your demo. Shay told you that uh, he's using your vacuum cleaner. Someone called Shay a grass and he said that you give him free blanks if, you, uh, if he snitches that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Mike. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed the banter, enjoyed the fun. I mean, we've had a, had a laugh this morning. Much better than last week with broadband issues and all that sort of rubbish. But hey, why was that? Hey, eh? what gremlin came after me? Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Nick. Cheers, Mike. Thanks Fred, cheers Charles, cheers Martin, I'm saying thank you everybody, thank you James, John thank you, cheers Joe too Mike said, yeah I, I can read oh, it, Joe's reading I forgot that, <laughs> thanks Clive, <laughs> thanks Ellen, bye, bye Michael, thank you Michael Stratton, Thanks, Jax. Colin King, glad you found it entertaining. Thanks, Paul. These are coming in too quick for me to read them. My eyes, slow down. Cheers, Stuart. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Dave. Please Cheers, like Paul. and subscribe. Oh, please, please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe as you leave. Uh, and thank you all for the support as per normal. It's been great. Thanks for coming along. Uh, and thank you for trying it one more time with the broadband issues. Eh? Cheers, YBBB. Cheers, Derek. Thanks, Pat. Great fun. Glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it this week. Mike Walt, take care. See you next week. No, I'll see you tomorrow night, Mike. I'll be there. Be there or be square. Mike Walt, uh, tomorrow evening. Turning knitting needles. Who knows what he's going to do. He might be doing some knitting instead of wood turning. Glad to see it's giving you some ideas, Julia. Give them a try. Cheers, Shay. Hit the like button, guys. Come on. Like button, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. I'm banned, Mike. Uh, 
All right, I won't come. I'll go and sit on the patio on my own and sulk. The first person to be banned from a Mike Walk demo, Ed Oliver. Well done. <laughs> I've been banned from better places. Thanks, Steve. Stay, stay safe. Good luck, guys. Right. I'm off. Cheers, Steve. The missus says I'm in education. It's not what they said at school. <laughs> so, people, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Have a good week. Goodbye.